Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you very much for joining me today. I truly appreciate it. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through two examples in which we find the limiting reactant for a chemical reaction. And in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through two more examples that are a little bit more advanced. So let's go ahead and jump into the first example. So this problem tells us that we have four moles of aluminum reacting with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of aluminum oxide. And the problem also tells us that we are starting out with four moles of aluminum and 2.4 moles of oxygen and we need to find which one of these two reactants, the aluminum or the oxygen, is the limiting reactant. So before I do any calculations or anything like that, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with regard to what the limiting reactant is, what the definition of it is. So the definition of limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first in a chemical reaction. So just to give you a little bit of an analogy here, uh, between the end of my first year and the beginning of my second year teaching high school chemistry, I got a summer job at a pizzeria and I learned how to make really good pizza. And one of the things I discovered was that the, the pizza dough that they made, which is really, really good, uh, only has six ingredients in it. And I, I, from my recollection, I think those six ingredients were water, oil, flour, sugar, salt, and yeast. That's all you really need to make really, really good pizza dough, and of course each ingredient requires their own specific uh, quantity to be added to the mixture to produce a given batch, a given quantity for a batch of, uh, of pizza dough, right? Now generally speaking, one of those ingredients I'm going to run out of first. So that ingredient, maybe it's the flour, maybe it's the water, maybe it's the, well it's probably not the water because it just comes right out of the tap, right? But one of those ingredients that's not the water, <laughs> is generally going to run out first. And that ingredient that runs out first is going to set a limit. It's going to limit how much pizza dough I can make, assuming I want to make as much pizza dough as I can, assuming I have a bunch of hungry customers, right? So hopefully the analogy is pretty obvious at this point, is that the reactant or the, the ingredient that runs out first is analogous to the limiting reactant of my chemical reaction. So that's the reactant that sets a limit on how much product I could make. In this case, the product is aluminum oxide. So that's what the limiting reactant is. Now, in order to find the limiting reactant, what we need to do is we need to figure out how much of one reactant is required to react completely with the other. So let me say that again. We need to find out how much of one reactant is required to react completely with the other. Now the way that you do that is you can start with either of these reactants. You can start with the aluminum or you could start with the oxygen. Doesn't really matter. You'll, you'll get to the, the right answer either way. Uh, so let's say that I just want to start with the aluminum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my four moles of aluminum, right? And so what I need to do is I need to find out how much oxygen is required to react completely with this four moles of aluminum. And the way that you do that is called a mole to mole conversion. So I'm gonna set up a conversion factor, right? I'm gonna divide by something, I'm gonna multiply by something. And so what I'm trying to convert away from is moles of aluminum. And what I'm trying to convert to is moles of oxygen, right? So the question then comes, what numbers belong in the denominator and the numerator of this, uh, of this fraction, of this conversion factor? And the answer is, that's gonna, that information is going to come from the coefficients of your balanced chemical equation. Your balanced chemical equation would be like the recipe for the pizza dough, right? So it determines how much of each reactant you need to produce a given quantity of your product. So the coefficient in front of the aluminum in this case, according to our equation, is 4 and the coefficient in front of the oxygen is 3. So this conversion is going to help us convert uh, and, and tell us how much oxygen is needed to consume all of the aluminum. So let's make sure that our, our units cancel out here. So the moles of aluminum will cancel out with moles of aluminum. And in this case, the numbers 4 and 4 actually cancel out too, right? Because anything divided by itself is 1. So this uh, conversion is mathematically pretty easy, right? And we're left with 3 moles of oxygen. So this is how much oxygen is required to react with all four of those moles of aluminum. So now that we know how much oxygen is required to react with all of our aluminum, now what we need to do is we need to compare this value to how much oxygen we have, right? And that's given by the problem. So the problem tells us that we start out with 2.4 moles of oxygen. So do we have more than enough oxygen to react with all the aluminum or do we have not enough oxygen to react with all of the aluminum? 
Well, since 2.4 moles of oxygen is less than 3 moles of oxygen, it looks to me like we don't have enough oxygen to react with all of our aluminum. And therefore, since we don't have enough oxygen to react with all of our aluminum, oxygen is going to be the limiting reagent. So let's go ahead and do the other example. Go ahead and erase this real quick. So the other exa this next example is a little bit more complicated, and it's based on this balanced chemical equation here where we have two moles of aluminum reacting with three moles of chlorine to produce two moles of aluminum chloride, right? And the problem tells us that we have three grams, 3.0 grams of aluminum, and we also have 3.0 grams of chlorine. Now, this problem isn't going to be as simple as the first one. And the reason why is because our starting quantities that we're given are in grams. They are not in moles. So remember, the balanced chemical equation tells us about moles. It's telling us that two moles of aluminum reacts with three moles of chlorine to produce two moles of aluminum chloride. It doesn't say anything about grams. It's talking about moles. So in order to make these quantities, the three grams of aluminum, three grams of chlorine, in, or in order to make those quantities compatible with the balanced chemical equation, we need to convert them to moles. So I'm going to set up two little uh, conversion factors here, right? So I've got my 3.0 grams of aluminum, right? And so I'm going to need to convert that to moles of aluminum. So the question becomes, how do I convert grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum? And the answer is you, uh, you refer to aluminum in your periodic table. The number at the very bottom, that represents the molar mass which is how many grams of aluminum per mole of aluminum there are. And so in my conversion factor, I'll put grams of aluminum on the bottom, and I'll put moles of aluminum on the top. Uh, when I refer to my periodic table, the molar mass of aluminum given by the periodic table is 26.982 grams of aluminum for every one mole of aluminum. And so I'm going to cancel my units out. Grams of aluminum cancels with grams of aluminum. And so 3.0 divided by that 26.982 uh, kept to two significant figures is going to be 0 0.11 moles of aluminum. So that's how much aluminum I have in moles. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for our chlorine. I'll put up a little divider here. Uh, so for our chlorine, again, we start out with 3.0 grams of Cl2. And so I need to convert, just as I did in the case of aluminum, from grams of Cl2 to moles of Cl2, right? Now, according to my periodic table, it looks like the, uh, the molar mass is, uh, what is it? It's 35.45, 35.45 grams of chlorine are in one mole of chlorine, but we have to be careful here because that is the, uh, that's the mass or the molar mass of one mole of chlorine. And since there are two uh, chlorines in a molecule of Cl2, we need to take this value, this 35.45 here, and we need to multiply it by 2. And that's how many grams of chlorine that we have, right? So 35.45 times 2, uh, that turns out to be 70.90. So that's how many grams of chlorine we have uh, for one mole of Cl2, right? And so the grams of chlorine cancels with grams of chlorine. So we need to take our 3.0 and divide it by 70.90. And kept to two significant figures, that ends up being 0 0.042 moles of chlorine. I'll sneak that in down here, right? 0 0.042 moles of chlorine. So I'll go ahead and underline both of these uh, in blue, because these are this is the important information right here, right? So now that we know how much aluminum we have in moles, how much chlorine we have in moles, we're going to do the same thing that we did in the previous example, where we're going to figure out how much of one reactant is required to react completely with all of the other reactant, and then compare to see how much of that other reactant we have versus how much uh, we need, right? So if I start out with my aluminum again, and, and again, you can start out with your chlorine or your aluminum, doesn't make a difference, you'll arrive at the same conclusion either way. So I'll start out with my aluminum, I have 0. 1, 1 moles of aluminum, and I'm going to use the coefficients from my balanced chemical equation to convert from moles of aluminum to moles of chlorine, right? 
So if I refer to those coefficients, it looks like the coefficient in front of aluminum is 2, coefficient in front of chlorine is 3. Making sure my units cancel, it looks like moles of aluminum cancels out with moles of aluminum. So it's 0.11 times 3 divided by 2. Uh, if you want to pause the video and spit, you know, punch that into your calculator, uh, I would highly encourage you to do so at this point. And uh, kept to two significant figures, it looks like it's 0 0.16 moles of Cl2. Calculator spits out 0 0.165. Um, and in general, the, uh, what I do when it comes, to, if, it's, if, it's a, if it's exactly halfway between uh, six and seven, I'll round to the nearest even number, which in this case uh, turns out to be six. Some people will tell you to always round up when there's five. Uh, other other uh, chemists, and including the ones that I respect, <laughs> will tell you to round to the even number if it's exactly halfway between uh, you know, one digit and the other. So I have 0 0.16 moles of chlorine, right? So now that I know how much chlorine will react completely with all of my aluminum, I need to compare that to how much chlorine I have. So in this case, I have 0 0.042 moles of chlorine, that's how much I have, and this 0 0.16 moles of chlorine, that's how much I need to react completely with all of my aluminum here. And so since I have much less chlorine than I need to react with all of my aluminum, it turns out that the chlorine in this case my 0.042 moles of chlorine, that is my, my limiting reactant. So that's it. Those are, those, uh, th those are just two examples for you. Um, like I said, the following video, we're going to do two more examples that are a little bit more advanced. So if you want to see those, I would highly encourage you to uh, subscribe to the channel uh, and um, click that notification bell, turn all notifications on. And if you enjoyed this video, I would uh, definitely be appreciative if you uh, leave a thumbs up on it. Uh, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. And all right, that's it. Take care.